Mercury Atlas 9 was launched on May 15, 1963 at 104 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral. It was the last crewed mission of the Mercury program, carrying astronaut Gordon Cooper on a 34-hour flight in a Mercury spacecraft named Faith 7. It was the first and only crewed Mercury mission that exceeded one day in duration, and it more than tripled the length of the 9-hour Mercury Atlas 8 mission preceding it with Wally Chirac. The Soviet Union, however, had already completed an almost four-day mission on Vostok 3. Eager to proceed with the Gemini program, which could better match and surpass Soviet capabilities, and satisfied with the smooth flight of Wally Shara on Mercury Atlas 8, NASA contemplated skipping Mercury Atlas 9 to avoid pushing the Mercury spacecraft any harder. After all, none of the missions had been completely problem-free, and letting the hardware accumulate bugs for three times the duration was risky. Ultimately, they decided to press on, but Mercury Atlas 10, which would have taken Alan Shepard into orbit for an even more ambitious three-day mission, was cancelled. Lots of improvements had been made on the Mercury Atlas system during the program. On previous flights, the thrusters had been a constant problem and prone to failure, so a backup set was added. To allow for the longer mission, Mercury now had more batteries and oxygen tanks, while the periscope was removed to compensate for the added mass. Still, this mission weighed more than any of the previous ones. During the mission, Cooper had two payloads to release, a 6-inch capsule with flashing lights that would test his ability to spot an object in orbit, and a 30-inch balloon that would remain tethered to Phase 7 on a 30-meter cord to measure drag at varying altitudes of the spacecraft's orbit. The small capsule worked, but the balloon didn't pop out as planned. In total, Cooper had 11 experiments to run and was able to take lots of photos, particularly during his rest period since he wasn't sleepy. The mission was remarkably trouble-free until the 19th orbit when there was a faulty acceleration indicator. That wasn't so serious, but on the 20th orbit, the attitude readings went out, and on the 21st orbit, the one before D orbit, a bus went out cutting power to the automatic control systems. So, with help from John Glenn, who was on a tracking ship, Cooper had to orient and judge his attitude manually using lines on the window he had drawn and a wristwatch to time the burns. After a flight of 34 hours and 19 minutes, Gordon Cooper returned safely to a Pacific Ocean splashdown near Midway Island, concluding the Mercury program which had done all it could to pave the way for the much improved Gemini spacecraft. This was the last time an American astronaut would launch into orbit alone. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Mercury Atlas 9.